Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. We are here with a uh, kind of review overview of a couple of new products, in particular, this from NZXT, which is the Kraken G10. And what this is, is actually a liquid-cooled GPU mounting kit that allows you to take um, some of your standard liquid coolers, self-contained liquid coolers, like NZXT's own Kraken X40, and mount them to graphics cards like the AMD R9 290 that we have sitting here in front of me. Now we're gonna go through the installation process and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, performance results. But I'm gonna give you an overview of why we're looking into this. Uh, obviously, the biggest complaint people have had about AMD's new Hawaii GPU, the R9 290 and the R9 290X, is that they get really hot. And when they get really hot, sometimes that causes performance issues, variability, variability of clock speeds. If you haven't looked into that, you can check our website at PCPer.com. We have a lot of stories in our GPU section um, that analyze that particular problem. Um, well, with the advent of the Kraken G10, which has actually been out for a little bit, but now they have official support in it for the R9 290 and 290X graphics cards, uh, we're, we're able to take away which we, what we think is the offending uh, culprit of those temperature and variability issues, which is the stock cooler from AMD. And what we're going to do is replace it with the Kraken X40 that I have sitting here uh, behind the box, and uh, we're gonna walk through that whole process. And we'll show you how idle temperatures, uh, load temperatures are drastically dropped on the GPU, but how some other things like VRM temperatures are actually affected negatively by installation of these particular components. Let's start the install. First step in installing the Kraken G10 with a self-contained liquid cooler is to remove the existing heat sink. And uh, we've actually gone ahead and cheated a little bit here and I've taken away, taken out many of the screws already uh, on the back. But it's a very, pretty simple process to remove the R9 290 and 290X cooler. There are, uh, I don't know, maybe a dozen screws or so that you need to take off to remove that and then to remove the heat sink you got to take off this retention bracket. All right, now that we have that out of the way, we'll go ahead and flip it over like so. And you'll kind of want to gently pry the heat sink up. Now, because you may have uh, some stickiness because of the thermal paste here and we can see we've already disconnected our fan too. So here is the blower cooler that AMD uses with their R9 290 and 290X. We are actually taking apart a 290 here for those of you that are curious and here you have the bare PCB and GPU there. Um, so we're going to go ahead and set that off to the side for a second. We're going to bring in some of the parts necessary for the build. So here we have the actual Kraken X40 itself. This is a self-contained water cooler that you would normally use on a processor on your primary CPU in your system. It's 140 millimeter. Uh, it's compatible with socket 1150, 1155, 2011, AM2, AM3, all those. We already have the fan installed on this particular unit. The first part of the installation is actually to use the NZXT Kraken G10 bracket, which as you see here is really just, I mean, it's really just a piece of metal um, that allows you to have the water cooler installed, a f uh, external fan installed, which is actually used to help cool the VRM units in the memory since you are taking off, you know, all that heat sink uh, from, from the R9 290. You've got some areas here to zip tie your tubing and stuff too. So, but the first step, an installation is actually to take the uh, additional fan that NZ NZXT provides with the G10 and install it into the cooler itself. Now it's going to be mounted uh, like this. So we've got um, the NZXT branding up top here. And obviously you're going to want that fan pointing down onto the voltage regulation hardware. So you'll want to mount it like so. And then we'll put the screws in through the top here. And these are just your standard kind of very large thread fan screws. All right, so now the fan is mounted on there and it will blow air down onto the graphics card, help cooling uh, all those voltage components. Uh, you'll also notice that we have here is a foam 
more or less a foam standoff, right? Uh, and NZXT provides a couple of these, and this is their default recommended position. And they're meant to help provide a little bit of balance, maybe some noise reduction when it's actually installed onto the PCB of the video cards. So you can see here um, that if we have this installed, it would actually kind of help keep uh, the metal bracket from making any contact with any of the devices on the board. Uh, the second one we normally would put up here, it actually makes contact with the power connections on this card. So you could move it over here or anywhere else that you thought it might be useful to uh, help keep uh, the metal of the bracket off of the card. Uh, okay, next step is to actually prepare the graphics card itself. And to do that, we need to use this. This is the backplate retention bracket from NZXT. Uh, it has three letters on here, A, B, and C at each corner, and each of those represents different form factors of video cards, right? So depending on which GPU you use, you'll be able to look in the directions and tell which one of these you need to use. Uh, for our card, for the R9 290 290X, we'll be using uh, A, the A locations. Uh, and what you do for there uh, is you get these four posts included with the G10 that slide up through there, and they're it's a little bit of a pain because everything is loose inside of here. They don't kind of snap into place. They can easily move between A and B and C locations. And then you take one of these rubber uh, uh, grommets or separators or spacers and it kind of just goes down onto the bracket like so. So we'll go ahead and put all four of these on here, trying to keep them in the A location. Although, like I said, they're loose and they'll just kind of move around, but you need to make sure you have all these posts on here with the included rubber spacers. So there we have all of those installed. And now what we'll go ahead and do is bring back our PCB for the R9 290, flip it over, and we will go ahead and put the brackets or the post of the uh, back plate here through the appropriate holes. All right. Okay, there you go. So now we've got our four posts coming through uh, this side of the PCB, and we are ready to bring in the actual Kraken X40 water cooler into the mix. Now you can see here uh, that it's a standard kind of tooth bracket, I guess I'll call it for lack of a better term. Um, where you have you want to line up these teeth on the metal part of the bracket so that they match up with the teeth on this and that will provide the retention. Obviously, um, because we took off the cooler of the R9290, we need to make sure that we replace any thermal paste in that regard. The G10 does not come with thermal paste, which will probably be seen as a negative to a lot of people. But I think um, if you're taking part in this kind of endeavor, you more likely have your own kind of available. So we have uh, some Arctic Silver here we're going to use real quick. What we'll go ahead and do is we'll pass the NZXT cooler, slide this out of the way just a little bit, through our uh, retention bracket here, the G10, and even though we would like to have it lined up this way, we actually can't because of the way the tubes work, so we'll rotate it about 90 degrees and uh, latch it on there like that. So you can see we have our teeth lined up, and now what we need to do is bring this over here. This can be a little bit of a pain. You just need to make sure things are still going to stay lined up, and you've got that big radiator that kind of makes things complicated. You may notice at the bottom here there are three holes and obviously they line up with that ABC uh, nomenclature that we saw in the back. So in this case we want to go through this front almost not even really a complete circle on those and it can be a little bit of a pain to make sure all of those are actually going through the right spot. So I may have to jump in front of the camera a little bit here to make sure all of these are going in the right location. Okay, now once you kind of have those lined up, 
NZXT has four thumb screws, so you'll want to get those installed. And again, it can be a little bit of a pain to get them started. Okay, so we have all four of them on here and we're going through and kind of tightening them a little bit at a time. I will say that the process of getting those bolts uh, through and getting these, these kind of uh, thumb screws on initially is really, really a pain in the neck. And they have these little rubber uh, gaskets padding on the bottom of them that seems like a good idea, except as soon as you actually start to tighten them, they rip and shred and fall off and they're not really very useful so you can see on a couple of them they're not even attached at this point um, but regardless it is holding on the the water cooler to the gpu as we wanted it to do so here we have an almost completely functional unit we've got uh, the bracket is attaching the, the water block to the gpu we have our fan that is blowing down air over the voltage regulation units and uh, the last step is actually to get this installed into your system but before you do that um, you do get to take advantage of some of the Kraken X40's capabilities right here you can see it's got uh, a three pin connector is all it needs for power to your motherboard obviously you won't be able to connect this to your CPU fan even though that's what the directions will tell you because you already have a CPU fan of some kind so you want to make sure that's installed there this just can go to any other three pin fan header and then what you'll do is the fan on the radiator you'll want to go ahead and attach to that connector there and then our three pin uh, connector for this fan can go uh, can get attached there as well. So now all you have is a single power connection uh, to attach to your motherboard once you have this graphics card installed. Obviously you'll want to have this card installed, you'll have to mount this uh, in your case someplace, you know, depending on, again you don't have to use the Kraken X40, but obviously NZXT would prefer you do that. Use one of theirs. And then if you want to take advantage of the other kind of monitoring stuff that the uh, NZXT software has, there is a USB connector here as well that you can connect to a spare uh, USB header on your board as well. Um, depending on, on where the radiator is actually mounted in your case, cable management can be, eh, it's pretty easy. At least in our test bed scenario, it was fairly easy. In this case, the way we mounted the water cooler or uh, the water block kind of allowed us to put these tubes up through here like that kind of keep them out of the way if you want to there are some zip ties included in the box and then there are some places to run those zip ties through you want to be careful that you're not putting too much kind of strain on these joints here that you worry about them kind of coming loose over time but i don't think that will be too much of an issue uh, and now you can mount this anywhere you need to mount it uh, your mileage will vary on that depending on your case and depending on the other components in your particular build. Uh, but let's uh, finish up and talk about performance. So after all that work, removing the old cooler and installing the uh, Kraken X40 and the Kraken G10 to your R9 290, what kind of performance benefits are you going to see out of it? Obviously, everything is going to vary depending on the specific card you had, but our results were actually pretty impressive. Uh, booting it up in this fashion, our uh, idle temperature was about 27 degrees Celsius, which is quite a bit lower than anything we got with our AMD cooler. And uh, we went ahead and did some overclocking, of course, as you would expect. We were able to run at, uh, we were able to hit 1200 megahertz without being 100% stable. Uh, the, the, the highest frequency I was able to hit consistently and still maintain 100% stability is uh, 1150 megahertz, which is a nice, nice bump over the 947 megahertz uh, default clock speed of the R9 290. The best part about that is, is that we were able to run at 1150 megahertz GPU clock fixed, no variance, no kind of um, variable clock speeds throughout testing for you know 30, 40, 50 minutes at a time. And our GPU temperature never went above 54 degrees Celsius. That's considering, you know, that's, that's 40 degrees Celsius lower than what the stock cooler 
would get you running at 947 megahertz. So that's actually really, really substantial improvement. It's, uh, it's, it's really impressive from an overclocking standpoint what you will be able to do with this GPU when you can cool it. Now the one negative we found is actually in that VRM temperature. Remember we said that this particular smaller fan that they included is blowing down on the voltage regulation, the power delivery uh, mechanisms on the card and it's meant to keep it cool. And it does an okay job, but the problem was in our testing when we were overclocked to 1150 or 1200 megahertz, our VRM temperatures were hitting 100 C or above. And that is quite a bit higher than expected. With our reference cooler, those units never really got above 80 degrees Celsius. So even though we're getting a huge drop in GPU temperature, we're getting a pretty not good, we're getting a very high increase in those VRM temperatures. And I really believe that uh, once we started to see 98, 99, and 100 degree VRM temperatures uh, based on our GPU-Z recordings, that's actually what is preventing us from overclocking higher than 1150 in a stable fashion. If we could somehow uh, cool those a little bit better, maybe play with some other third-party products uh, in conjunction with this NZXT Kraken G10 device, we may be able to get some, some more impressive results. Like I said, this will work on the 290 and the 290X, but uh, this is the 290 we tested with. I'm sure the 290X will have the same VRM issues. Now, in terms of pricing, the Kraken G10 is 29 bucks or so, uh, so you're talking $30 to take an existing self-contained water cooler that you may or may not have and install it on your existing R9290 card that you may or may not have. So that's not so bad, but if you don't already have a self-contained water cooler that is compatible with the Kraken G10, you need to buy something like the Kraken X40, which is another $90. So total for us, this is $120 worth of hardware that we installed on a $400 video card to get uh, you know, an increase from uh, 950 to 1150 megahertz clock speed. Is that something really worth doing? Obviously, that's up to you and, and uh, you know, where your overclocking capabilities and desires really lie. Uh, I think running your GPU at 55 degrees Celsius instead of 95 degrees Celsius is a huge bonus. If NZXT can figure out a way to improve the cooling on uh, the VRM, maybe it's just as simple as running this fan at top speed because one of the other things that's a plus is that this whole combination of this fan on the uh, radiator and this fan over the VRM still much, much quieter than what you've got out of the stock cooler as well. So I think it's a huge improvement. It's not perfect, but it's a huge improvement uh, from NZXT with the Kraken G10 uh, if you want to water cool or help improve the cooling on your R9 290 or 290X. Uh, we have a full article. It's going to have some more benchmarks and, and graphs and show you details on temperatures and clock speeds that we were able to hit with this uh, product and combination at PCPer.com. So, so be sure to check that out and keep checking out all the other videos on our channel. Thanks, guys.